Tilly Titions and good morrow everyone and welcome back to another grounded video where today I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks on how to accomplish the Javamatic. Now in order to unlock the Javamatic you guys are going to need to go through a couple different things including Wendell flying right in front of the camera. I'm just kidding. Now in order to do this you guys are going to have to go through and do the Undershed Lab and get the Embiggening Cocktail, gather up all the recipe parts for it and place down the Embiggening Cocktail cell inside of the Javamatic and all of those other things. If you are now to this point and you are looking for some tips, this video is going to really help you guys out. So let's get into it. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and activate the Javamatic. And I'm going to go down here. I'm going to give you guys some ideas of really what's going to be coming your way and why you can't really do this without building because you're going to need to build. So I'm going to go ahead and get it activated and it's going to go ahead and make this big electric shock. And then it's going to go through and zap out and say, uh oh, we're going to need more power, insufficient power. Okay, perfect. Let's get it powered up. Oh, wait, there's orcs attacking the cells. We need to get those fixed. So you're going to need a repair tool. All right, so with your repair tool in hand, you will have to actually come down here and fight some fire ants in order to get them off of your little mixer parts that are here. So this is kind of giving you an idea of what is coming for you in the game. When you're going to go through and try to do this base defense, this is like a super mixer, except instead of defending one point, you have to defend three. You have to defend three different distinct locations, these giant pink, well, mixer things, right? So this is how you're going to charge this thing up. You need to go through, you need to repair it, and then you need to protect them away from all other damage that might be coming their way. Thank you, Wendell, for all of your shiny balls in my face. Okay. Now that you've gone through and done that, grab out your repair tool, get these fixed up, and then we'll go over some tips to help you guys be able to defend these things. So we've now unlocked the Javamatic storage facility by talking to Wendell. And the Javamatic storage facility, guys, is this little facility that is literally right down here. Everybody keeps asking me, uh, Sim, what is the lab that's underneath the concrete bricks? This is the storage facility. That's what this is for. And this is going to give you the start of some building materials to give you guys an idea of what you're going to have to do in order to take on the Javamatic. Now... Tips and tricks in order to take this thing down. First things first, you're going to want to be able to gather aggro to yourself, okay? So you're going to want a high aggro armor on or an armor that's going to allow you to do a lot of damage. Okay, so this is going to be anything from roly-poly gear or black ox beetle gear that's going to pull aggro towards your character off to doing things like having a fast weapon that can cause some AoE damage or using a staff or anything like that. It's going to allow you to pull bugs off of the Javamatic mixers. Now, what are you going to expect to see during this Javamatic mixer? You are going to see mosquitoes. You are going to see roly polies, black ox beetles, dust mites, fire ants, soldier fire ants, and fireflies, just to name a few of the things that are going to come and try to attack the three different mixers while you're in here. And they all are going to be orcs, which gives us a little bit of a bonus. There's a couple different things that you can do to help you out with orcs. All right, let's talk about dealing with orcs. Dealing with orcs, you can use traps in order to deal with them. And specifically, you can use very special traps that are meant to deal with orcs, the orc disruption bomb. This is a shockingly sour bomb that acts as an EMP device for all orc creatures in a large radius when triggered. These are literally made, guys, specifically for you to be able to go through and do the Javamatic. Making these is not that expensive. There's sour candy all over the upper yard. There's orc receivers that you're probably going to get a ton after you get Wendell, because after you've gotten Wendell out of the lab that he's in, Orcs will start raiding you and they will not stop until you beat the game. All right. And then there's tough gunk and pine cones. Tough gunk you can get by going through and fighting anything from ladybird larva all the way up to um, black ox beetles. And and the sky's really the limit on those ones. You're going to get any tough gunk from those guys. Any of the tier three creatures are going to provide it. And then pine cone pieces. You just need a tier three hammer. You guys got this. They're all around the upper backyard. Putting these down is great because it actually does act as an EMP and stuns all of the creatures around it, which is really, really necessary when doing this. Another thing 
that could really, really help you guys out if you guys are stuck doing these orcs, these, this Javamatic on your own is spike strips. The bugs do not avoid spike strips. They're looking for the quickest path to the Javamatic to destroy it. So using spike strips and surrounding your bases with them and surrounding different barricade points that you're using is a fantastic idea. Now, let's hop on down here over here to check out what I have done for my playthrough to show you guys my setup on how I beat the Javamatic solo on my first try before they even went through and nerfed the Javamatic playthrough. The Javamatic fight. So let's run right over here. Jumping up here. By the way, this zip line does go up. If you jump on it, it'll bring you up. It will not bring you down. Okay, so this is what I had done. And I'm going to tell you guys the folly of my ways here in just a moment of some of the things that, well, I messed up. So first things first, you guys can see that if my spike strips that I was using, right? Then you can see how many walls I lost while doing this battle, but you can still see the spike strips, the remnants of what was left of spike strips here, of what I used in order to protect my, my Javamatic mixers. I also went through, you can't see it there because it got completely destroyed, but I built up wall units, kind of like Helm's Deep, to block out raids of bugs and you can see that this one actually worked really well it blocked out everything and i was able to keep things out from coming too far over here to destroy this one you'll notice that this mixer also has a roof on it this is one of the two that does need a roof because it will be attacked by flying creatures this one gets attacked by mosquitoes tiger mosquitoes pretty early on so be careful, build a roof on top of this one. It will really help you guys out and do like I did and put down some spike strips across the top of it because when the when the insects go to attack the roofs, they'll actually get damaged on the spike strips. You can see I also built down some walls that were back over here. Those got completely destroyed and wiped out. This was all just to give myself enough time to protect these. Now, one of the errors that I made that I don't want you guys to make is I did not put a wall or a roof over the top of this mixer. Fireflies come after this mixer. You want to get this mixer covered as well. And you should never have just one wall protecting your mixer. Notice how I only have one here, so they are able to break through fairly easily. Where over on this one, if you look, I actually had these triangle walls set up in a pattern to allow me to have more surface area for the ants and rhino or the black ox beetles rhino beetles um and the roly polies and stuff like that to attack because they will come and they will rip through walls another tip for you guys do not use anything less than at a minimum weed stem walls you should be using at least brick if not concrete walls in order to do these roly polies black ox beetles and soldier fire ants will rip right through grass sturdy grass and weed stem walls like it's nothing the mushroom brick walls have a decent amount of health but the concrete walls have 25 percent more health than even the mushroom walls do making it so you don't have to worry as much about things invading you now i had a bunch of people tell me sim why don't you try out turrets why don't you try out turrets why don't you try out turrets so i built some turrets and what i found is when i was playing alone i just did not have the time to even get into a turret and try to use it instead i just left it alone and said goodbye see you later okay another couple tips for you guys i would suggest building lure traps i know right lure traps why would you use lure traps Okay, let me show you guys something. If you were to go through and you were to take a lure trap, right? Let me see, where, right here. So you put down a lure trap. Let's put it right over here where it can actually be built. Okay, now, a lure trap is going to attract all bugs around it to that trap. Now, if you were to go through and take some spike strips and build yourself a triangle around this thing, because you can and you want to, so you build yourself a little triangle. Just by going, man, we'll just do it just nice and easy like this, right? Now, they can't get to that lure trap to attack it without themselves getting damaged themselves. So these are different ways for you to buy more time. Now, if you can put down like an orc disrupting, up disruptor EMP right inside of that as well. So if you just put down that in there as well, not only are they going to come and get damaged by these spike strips, then they're going to get stunned by, this, by the orc bomb getting even more damage done to them on the way up. Now, I'll tell you guys, 
I literally had built up an, an entire castle around this thing. This entire area here was completely blocked off with mushroom bricks. Back over there was completely blocked off with mushroom bricks. Back behind there was blocked off with mushroom bricks. And in that corner, we I also blocked off with mushroom bricks. You can see the remnants of the walls over there. And that still was barely enough to get me through. So you're going to have to build. There is too many creatures in the Java-matic for you guys to go through and fight it without building. You're going to need to build in order to beat the Java-matic. I'm sorry, you just need to. Now, another tip that I have for you guys, do not do like I did and forget to put Guard Dog on. Guard Dog is so helpful because it increases the damage you are doing against bugs while you are defending. And guess what? You are going to be defending this entire time. So, that's important. So we have build with mushroom bricks. We have place down EMP bombs and spike strip traps. We have make sure you have guard dog on. We have use lure traps to distract the enemies. And we also have go through and build up large but walls to block things off and build in many tiers. That way they can't get to the Javmatic Mixers because once they're over here and they actually start hitting these things, you will be amazed on how quickly these things die once you actually start fighting and something starts attacking it. Now I know that this seem, this one seems a little silly. You might be asking, well, Sim, if you have to block the other two in, why don't you put a roof on this one? You actually don't need to. Nothing comes up here and actually attacks the top of this one. I put grass over the top of this to give myself and at the time, Nima, who was playing with me, who was my archer at the time, a chance to be able to shoot down arrows and rain arrows upon things by being up in a safe spot. Seeing so, you know, when you're an archer, you can't block. So I wanted to give her somewhere safe to be able to shoot arrows from. That was the point of building this. But... I hope that these tips are helpful for you guys. I hope this makes the Javamatic this much easier for you guys. It has already been nerfed a little bit on its own, but nonetheless, it is one of the end fights and it is super fun. But thank you guys all so much for watching this one. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to me. Comment down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next one.